Dinosaurs are amazing creatures, but they didn't rule the past alone nor forever. So check out these amazing prehistoric creatures that were mostly not dinosaurs. There are some birds in this video, and I know they're technically dinosaurs, just roll with it. What does a megalodon and a saber-toothed cat share in common? I'll give you a second, go ahead and take a wild guess. If you weren't sure, the correct answer was over-specialization. Megalodon is a shark of enormous proportion, but a large factor to its success was the numerous amount of large marine animals at that time. And when those prey animals evolved or went extinct, it left them without anything to eat. Which eventually led to the extinction of their species, because they couldn't change fast enough. Which is actually a very similar story to saber-toothed cats. This group of big cats had evolved to take down large mammals. And as such, while they were incredibly strong, they weren't particularly fast. And they were more than likely ambush hunters. And as their prey got smaller and quicker, they became less and less successful. Eventually also causing their extinction. Overspecialization is actually very common in nature and has caused many extinctions. The moral of this video? Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Did you know that there used to be giant hyenas? Meet the Pachycrocuta, also known as the giant short-faced hyena. When I say they're giants, that's no joke. They were up to three feet tall at the shoulders and could weigh more than 240 pounds, approaching the size of modern-day lions. Because of their size, these guys would have to get creative. They weren't as quick and nimble as some of the other predators that existed in their time. As such, they likely resorted to ambush hunting and scavenging. And similar to modern-day hyenas, they likely lived in social groups. Also similar to modern hyenas, the females are larger than the males, and packs would have been led by a matriarch. And if you didn't know, a group of hyenas is called a clan. And a group of lion-sized hyenas just doesn't sound like a fun time for me. And like so many other large animals, they fell victim to one thing, themselves. They had become far too over-specialized, leading them to be outcompeted by the modern-day spotted hyena. One of the largest fish ever is this behemoth known as Lead Seekthus. At up to 50 feet or 16 meters, these guys were absolutely massive. And while they were carnivores, they were carnivores in the same way that whales are carnivores. They likely sustained themselves with suspension feeding, similar to whale sharks today. By the way, if you don't look at this face and get a chuckle out of it, you have no soul. They had specialized gill rakers, useful for trapping prey. If you're from Minnesota like me and you've ever caught a pike or a muskie before, you might already have some experience with gill rakers. For those of you that don't have experience, gill rakers are tiny sharp points attached to the gill plates. The ones in Lead Seek This were specialized to filter out certain types of prey which means they likely occupy the same niche that baleen whales and whale sharks do today. Which also means that the death of one of these animals would have been very important for the ecosystem. Very similar to whale falls today. And their extinction opened a path for baleen whales. It's interesting that it always comes back around. Alright, I've been seeing some slander lately about my boy, and I'm just gonna say I'm not here for it. Anomalocaris is a certified gentleman. This guy got a 730 credit score right now as an extinct arthropod. He is the shrimp who fried the rice. And he can't even hurt you, he's just a little guy. And he probably only ate small, soft-bodied prey anyway. All in all, what I'm saying is stop slandering this absolute legend. Millions of years ago, everything was bigger. And during the Carboniferous, the largest scorpion that we know of was born. Meet Pulmano Scorpius. These giant scorpions could get nearly three feet long. And they possessed incredibly long pincers. Their long claws coupled with some of the earliest venom would have allowed them to subdue nearly anything including and especially all tetrapods, who were still gaining their footing in this world. You still might not fully understand how large this animal is, so for reference, just check out the bottom right-hand corner. It tells you pretty much all you need to know. Unlike modern scorpions, these guys still had relatively powerful compound eyes. In modern scorpions, these compound eyes are reduced significantly, and I'm not too sure why that is, I'll have to look more into that. Seeing as they were earlier in the scorpion lineage, these guys still possessed a lot more basal arthropod features. And unfortunately for them, nature began to favor the smaller and smaller scorpions. And they'd be left behind in the Carboniferous where they began. The ocean can be a terrifying place. And millions of years ago, these guys would have made it that much worse. Allow me to introduce you to Prognathodon, one of the largest mosasaurs. There are quite a few species of these guys, with the largest one reaching nearly 40 feet long. One of the scarier parts about them is that they're far more robust than other mosasaurs. Their bulky body and incredibly powerful jaws would have allowed them to be generalist hunters. Stomach content from these guys shows them that they weren't too picky. In fact, their feeding habits were compared to modern-day orcas. And if these guys were anything like orcas in terms of personality, it's game over. 
Like, imagine a dumber, angrier, bigger orca. If you watch Casual Geographic, you know that's an L for everybody but the Prognathodon. I mean, for Pete's sake, their teeth are designed to both cut and crush. Like, doing one wasn't bad enough in the first place. And their jaws are massive, even by Mosasaur standards. Like the orca, they are terrifying but beautiful animals. This is an incredibly powerful and ancient Permian predator. Meet an Austrian sevia, the largest of a family of animals known as Gorgonopsids. And ancient's a bit of an understatement. These guys are nearly 260 million years old, placing them as some of the largest predators of the Permian. At upwards of 11 feet long and over 650 pounds, these guys are massive. These guys are part of a group known as Therapsids. So while they're not necessarily true mammals themselves, these guys are closer related to us than they are to, like, dinosaurs. That's because all mammals are therapsids, but not all therapsids are mammals. And Austrian Sevia had some incredibly specialized features for its time, including its saber-like teeth, which are very similar to Smilodon. However, unlike Smilodon, these guys had the muscle to back up their jaws. So they likely weren't used for precision, but more likely generalist feeding. And with the fact that these guys would have been good runners, pretty much everything's on the menu all the time. Meet the largest flying bird who ever lived. This is the giant Teratorn, otherwise known as Argentavis. They lived about six million years ago, near the end of the Miocene. And despite what many people seem to think, they're not related to eagles. These guys are actually vultures, and their closest living relatives are condors. But these guys are significantly larger than their condor cousins. They stood around five to six feet tall. But their height isn't the best part, it's their weight and wingspan. They weighed over 150 pounds and had a wingspan of up to 20 feet. And honestly, the way they would have eaten is kind of funny. Like modern vultures, these guys would have been scavengers. Except they got the size to back it up. Instead of getting bullied off carcasses, they likely bullied other animals instead. He's like the cousin who shows up to the family event late and eats all the food anyways. However, the hook shape of their beak also implies they may have been active predators which means they wouldn't only steal your food, but probably murk you too. Some prehistoric animals are just something else. Sometimes even nature doesn't know what it's doing. Case in point is this oddball, the Helicoprion. As a Eugenodon fish, these guys are distantly related to sharks. But if this was Jaws, it'd be a much different movie. Helicoprion could actually be quite large, upwards of 25 feet. But the star of the show is their odd-shaped jaw, known as a tooth whorl. This whorl spirals in a circle in the jaw allowing for fairly consistent tooth replacement. But how does something like this work? It doesn't seem like it'd be easy to eat with. Aside from their little spiral of death, they also have teeth on the roof of their mouth. It's thought that they use the front teeth of the world to grab onto prey and pull it deeper back into its mouth. The center set of teeth would have been used to hold the prey in place while it was grinded against the roof of the mouth. And the rear teeth would have pushed it down the throat after it had been processed. And while they don't have the strongest bite force, they could likely still attack hard-shelled prey. If they could get their teeth into the soft portion, they could slurp it up like a spaghetti noodle. Not exactly, but you kind of get the idea. This is one weird fish. Meet the Hell Pig, one of the most terrifying creatures since the dinosaurs. This is a family of creatures known as Entelodonts. The larger species could get up to 7 feet tall at the shoulders, and weigh more than 1,600 pounds. Similar to pigs, these guys have teeth consistent with omnivores, and it's likely that their diet was actually fairly similar to pigs as well. Because while these big boys got plenty of veggies, they also wouldn't shy away from meat. At the very least, it's assumed they would also have been scavengers. Based on skull remains, they would have had an excellent sense of smell. And it was shown that their teeth had wear on them, consistent with bone-chewing animals like hyenas. And while it's still debated, they may have actually been active predators as well. But definitely not an apex like so many other folks depict them as. And despite being called a hell pig, these guys are actually closer related to hippos and cetaceans like orcas and dolphins. So take Hungry Hungry Hippos, swap out one of the Hungries for Angry, and you got this guy. And they got long legs, so you'd better start running. Let's round off the Halloween season with a true creepy crawly. These guys are the giant sea scorpions, also known as Eurypterids. And while they're not actually scorpions, they share very similar morphology. But some sea scorpions, especially those in the Pterygotidae like this Jacolopteryx, were massive, reaching up to 8 feet long. And those within the Pterygotidae had large pincers. And in their heyday, they were the apex predators. But not all of them are massive, nor do they all have giant claws. The average Eurypterid is about 3 feet long, so still quite a bit bigger than most modern-day arthropods. These guys are also some of the oldest predators in the fossil record, with some species dating back to over 400 million years ago. And it's thought that their predatory nature may have driven the evolution of many species, including fish. 
which would make them an important species to nearly all vertebrate evolution on this planet, including us. Luckily for us humans, the last Eurypterid went extinct about 250 million years ago. And as unfortunate as that may be, at least when we take a dip in the ocean, we don't have to see anything like this. Baboons are evil. And they're not only evil, but they used to be much larger. This massive looking baboon is a Dinopithecus, and they're double the size of the largest modern day baboons. Modern day baboons are the culprits of all sorts of crimes like breaking into cars, to straight up just trying to mug people on the street. Now imagine this, but twice the size. Interactions between Dinopithecus and humans would likely be very different. Even ignoring their size, analysis of carbon isotopes in their teeth shows that they didn't eat that many leaves. Modern baboons are omnivores with a very wide diet, including a lot of leafy greens. But for Dinopithecus, that only accounted for about 2% of its diet. And despite being capable and more than likely willing to eat meat, they still mainly ate fruits. And their large size was likely an evolutionary adaptation to compete with other giant apes like Gigantopithecus, which they more than likely came in contact with and perhaps even hunted them like modern baboons do to other monkeys today. Moral of the story is, just don't trust the baboons. This animal is Kel and Ken. They're part of a group known as terror birds. Remember, not all dinosaurs died in the KPG extinction, and so they had to come up with a new way to terrorize life on this planet. They're the largest member of the forest racidae, and the biggest estimates put them at up to 10 feet tall. And Kel and Ken's head is around the size of a horse. Even compared to other members of its own family, Kel and Ken is rather robust. He's like that cousin that becomes a gym rat after high school, and it made them capable of taking down exceptionally large prey for an animal of their size. Though it is assumed that they hunted animals mostly smaller than themselves. And a more recent study showed that the terror birds had very rigid skulls. Combined with their long neck, this would have allowed them to deliver powerful death blows to their prey. And I don't know about you, but just that hooked beak is enough to scare me off. It wouldn't be a spooky season without a proper horror movie villain. And while the film versions aren't all that accurate, the Mega Piranha is still a very real animal and they're possibly even more terrifying than their film counterparts. These piranha could be upwards of 20 pounds, and they had an incredibly powerful bite force anywhere from 300 to 1,000 PSI. It would allow them to bite straight through bone and even armored turtle shells. This was likely an adaptation due to their ecosystem, which contained multitudes of armored reptiles like crocodilians and turtles, as well as armored catfish. Some of those armored catfish are still around today. As opposed to their modern cousin's sharp triangular teeth, they had more broadened and flattened teeth. Because of this, it's been suggested that they're relatives of both the Paku and the Piranha, and they may represent a transitional species between the two genuses. And if that's true, then they might also be omnivorous as opposed to strictly carnivores. Either way, I wouldn't want to get in the water and find out. Have you heard about the Cretaceous Kraken? Meet the Tusotuthis, which is indeed a cephalopod that lived alongside marine animals like Mosasaurus. Even if you have heard about it before, I've got some news for you. Newer research shows us that the animal may have looked more like this. More like the vampire squid than the giant squid. But even that is speculative. That's because the only fossils we have are fossils of the Gladius. The Gladius is a long, thin structure that would run through here. It functions as a sort of a backbone and is typically found in squids. The only creature alive today that has a gladius that's not a squid is the vampire squid. And yes, I know that's confusing. That's because vampire squids are a family of their own, separate from octopuses and squids. And based on the gladius, Tusotuthis may have been an ancient member of their family, which would make their body proportions more something like this. But don't let that appearance change fool you one bit. At that size, like their modern cousins, they were likely fierce hunters. With how intelligent many cephalopods have shown themselves to me, it makes one think. What tactics would these ancient cephalopods have used? Perhaps time will tell. When someone says pterodactyl, this is what pops into most people's heads. Meet the Pteranodon, a large pterosaur from Lake Cretaceous, North America, and one of the most well-researched animals in the fossil record. Over a thousand specimens of Pteranodon have been found, which give us a fairly good look at their lives. This species is dimorphic. Males are typically larger, with up to a 20-foot wingspan. They also have a much more narrow pelvis as well as those elaborate head crests. A female's crest was much more reduced and they were typically smaller, averaging about 12 feet, which is still enormous by today's standards. And they seem to be quite capable flyers. They'd use their long forearms and legs to launch themselves into the air, where they'd soar over the Western Interior Seaway, which was an ocean that once split North America in half. And its wing structure is similar to that of a modern day albatross, suggesting they flew in a similar way. And as one might expect, they were mainly piscivorous, but they probably weren't too picky. Pteranodon is easily one of the most iconic extinct animals. And no matter who you are, you probably know about this animal. And I want you to remember one very important thing. It's not a dinosaur, it's a pterosaur.